How's it going guys? It's Josh here again from Motivao. Today we're going to find delta given epsilon for a specific example of a limit. Okay. So the question is let f of x equal square root of x squared plus 1 be a function. Find delta given epsilon for the following limit. The limit when x approaches 2, remember that's how we read it, of the square root of x squared plus 1 equals square root of 5. Okay. So before we do anything, what I want you to do is to associate the definition with the problem. So by doing that, let's go here below and let's stop here. What can we associate? Well, we know that C is what? Is that number next to the, to the right of the arrow. So in this case, C is 2. Okay? Then f of x is my function. In this case, f of x is what? Is the square root of x squared plus 1. And then l. What's l in this case? Well, l is square root of 5. Okay? So far, so good. This, again, is by association. c is 2 is the number in the right of the arrow, f of x is the square root of x squared plus 1, is the function given, and l is the value, square root of 5. Okay, So let's keep going. Now, by definition, it says, if for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that, and then there's the condition, right? If 0 is less than blah, 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 blah. Well, again, I'm going to do the same thing and associate each value with the particular problem. So in this case, we know that c is 2, so we substitute 2. We know that f of x is the square root of x squared plus 1, and we know that l is the square root of 5. So therefore, we have this condition. We have to satisfy this condition. Okay. Now, for all epsilon and delta problems, you're going to go backwards. You're going to use the conclusion to find a hypothesis. And this is a very like non-common method in math, but for this particular problem, that's how you have to do it. Okay? So we're gonna use the conclusion. Therefore, we're gonna use the fact that square root of x squared plus one minus square root of five. Okay? And what we want to find a delta that satisfies that this is less than, I'm sorry, my nose is bothering me. This is less than epsilon, okay? So, how do I do that? Well, the first thing you have to notice is that we have square roots, okay? And for every epsilon and delta problems, not every, but 90% of them, um, you want to multiply by the conjugate. Okay, so what is the conjugate of this expression? <clears throat> In this case will be the square root of x squared plus 1 plus the square root of 5, right? And then you know that you can't just add things from nowhere without changing my equation. So what I'm going to add is actually multiplication of the number 1. But this number 1 is being this, well, it's being disguised as the conjugate. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to multiply by the absolute value of square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5 divided by the absolute value of square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5. Okay? That will be my multiplication. Notice that this whole thing is equal to 1. Okay? So we're good. We're in the safe side. We can do this. Now, why do I want this? Because the multiplication, remember one of the properties of absolute value is that, let me move it to the right because we're going to use the space. The square, the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a 
times the absolute value of b. Also, very important, we're going to use that also, the square root of the absolute value of a divided by the absolute value of b is equal to the absolute value of a divided by b, okay? Where a and b are any real number. So these two properties, we're going to use them to solve our, our problem, okay? So again, we're going to multiply these two because if the absolute value, I can separate them into two multiplications inside, then I'm going to bring this square root of x squared plus 1 inside the, the other absolute value. So it's going to look something like this. <clears throat> so you got the absolute value of square root of x squared plus 1 minus square root of 5 times the absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5. Okay? And then divide it by the absolute value of my conjugate, which is x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5. Okay? So now, what we're interested right now is the top, the, the numerator, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply these two. Now, the reason we multiply by the conjugates is because we can use a special factor, which is the difference of squares, right? So a minus b times a plus b is what? Is a squared minus b squared, okay? So how are we going to associate that with our problem? Well, take a to be the square root of x squared plus 1, and take b to be the square root of 5. That being said, this, these two, so this will be a, so I'm going to write it down. I'm going to use a different color. So this one is a, this one is b, this one is a, and this one is b. So this is minus and this is plus, and we are multiplying these two. So by our difference of squares, this is a squared minus b squared, this multiplication. And we want to do that. So let's go back to our previous color. Well, if I can find it. Um, what will be the multiplication? It will be the absolute value of the a squared. So I'm going to write it as square root of x squared plus 1 squared minus b squared, so the square root of 5 squared, divided by, I, I guess I could choose colors, yeah, ha, genius, divided by square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5, okay? <clears throat> now, what is this equal to? Well, the square root of it to the power squared, what happens to that? They cancel each other, right? So this gives, uh, gives us x squared plus 1, because the square root cancels with the squared, minus, well, what is square root of 5 squared? It's just 5, minus 5. <clears throat> and we have the, the denominator, which doesn't change. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so now we got x squared plus 1 minus 5. So what is that equal to? Well, x squared minus 4, right? So we have the absolute value of x squared minus 4. Oops, let me make that line straight. There you go. Over again, my denominator. But what is that equal to? <clears throat> now we have another difference of squares, right? x squared minus 4 will be a here. Well, a will be a, a, x. And what will be b? b will be 2, right? Because it's b squared, so 2 squared. So this, by factorization, is the absolute value of x minus 2 times x plus 2, right? And then the square root of x squared plus 1 
plus square root of 5. Okay, so let's continue. Now, again, by the properties of multiplication of absolute values, I can separate these two multiplications into two different absolute values. So we have the absolute value of x minus 2, and then the absolute value of x plus 2, divided by the absolute value of square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5. Okay? Now, now comes the part where we go back to the hypothesis and use this thing that we just find, found and apply it to, to the hypothesis to find the conclusion. So we're not using the conclusion per se, we're just manipulating the conclusion so we can use the hypothesis to prove the conclusion. I know it's weird, it's confusing, it used to confuse the heck out of me, but try to understand slowly what I'm talking about. So now, what's the hypothesis? Well, the hypothesis is that we have that the absolute value of x minus 2 is, is less than delta. That's given, right? That's your, your, your hypothesis. So this absolute value is less than delta. Where is absolute value of x minus 2 here? Well, it's right here. It's this thing that we have here. Everything else is not absolute value of x minus 2. So I need to make an inequality with those variables. I need to take the variables away and make them real numbers, right? Because delta is a real number. So I don't want an epsilon that depends on x. I just want an epsilon that depends on delta, okay? So how, will, how do we do this? Well, the method we're going to use, I call it the minimum method. Um, I guess that's how other people call it too. I'm not sure. Um, is that we want to find the minimum value between a certain number and delta. And that's going to be our delta, okay? So choose delta to be equal to 1, okay? You can choose delta to be equal to anything greater than 0. Remember, delta is a real number greater than 0. But I prefer 1 because 1 is an easy number to work with. In some cases, we're going to use 1 half, okay? So it's not strictly 1. It could be any number, okay? But I like to use 1. So if delta is 1... Let's go, let's hold down onto that, and then go back to, let's use another color. Okay, so if delta is one, then I have, by hypothesis, the absolute value of x minus two is less than delta, which is one, okay? And you'll see how we're gonna fix this. Now, by definition of absolute value, if you saw the previous video, you know that this implies, this is an if and only if statement, a negative 1 is less than x minus 2 is less than 1. Okay? That means if I add 2 into all of the sides of the inequality, I have minus 1 plus 2 less than x minus 2 plus 2 less than 1 plus 2, right? Which implies negative 1 plus 2 is what? 1. Less than minus 2 plus 2 is what? 0. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. So that means that if delta is 1, x is between 1 and 3, okay? How are we going to use that? Well, we need this right here. We need to find the bound of this whole fraction, okay? So let's start with the absolute value of x plus 2, okay? So how do I get that from this one? Well, I'll just add 2. So from this one, let's use another color, I'm going to uh, search the upper bound for absolute value of x plus 2. So I'm going to add 2 in, in all the sides. So 1 plus 2 is less than x plus 2 is less than 3 plus 2, okay? Which means that 3 is less than x plus 2 
is less than 5. Okay. But I can't just use x plus 2 because it's absolute value of x plus 2 that we need. So how do I find the how do I change this inequality to an absolute value again? Well, we need a negative five, right? Because negative five and five will, ma will, will make it an absolute value by definition. So we know that negative five is what? It's less than three, which is less than x plus two, which is less than five. We know that, right? Negative five is smaller than three, so that's true. So that implies that negative five is less than x plus two, less than five. And the reason we want negative 5 is that now we can transform this inequality into an absolute value by definition, right? Or by theorem, like I said in the previous video. So this is the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 5. And there you have it. We just found an upper bound for the absolute value of x plus 2. Now we're going to do the same thing for my next uh, expression in the equality. So for the denominator, right? So we want to transform x into this denominator. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to choose a different color. Okay. So we start with the x one, just like the one before. We know that x is between 1 and 3 if delta is 1. So now we want this whole expression. So let's do that. So 1 is... No, that color, I don't like that color because I can't see. Okay, so 1 is less than x is less than 3. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is squared, right? There's an x squared there. So 1 squared is 1, x squared less than 9, right? And then the next thing I want to do is add 1. So I'm going to add 1. So 1 plus 1, x squared plus 1, and 9 plus 1. So this is 2, x squared plus 1, and 10. Then what are we going to do? Well, there's a square root, so I'm going to square root. So square root of 2, less than square root of x squared plus 1, less than square root of 10. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to add square root of 5 because that's what the expression is, 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 says, right? So square root of 2 plus square root of 5 less than square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5 less than square root of 10 plus square root of 5. Okay? And now comes the tricky part. This is on the denominator, right? So it's not exactly this upper bound, it will be the reciprocal of this one. So the thing that you need to understand is when you find the reciprocal of an inequality, it changes the direction of the, of the inequality. So 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 5 is greater now because it changes the inequality whenever we find the reciprocal. 1 over square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5, okay? And which is greater than 1 over square root of 10 plus square root of 5, okay? Now, again, we want to transform this inequality into an absolute value. So which one do we need? We need the greatest one, right? Because we're looking for an upper bound. So we need the left one. But the left one has to be... So this expression has to be greater than what? Than the negative of the upper bound, which is true, right? This is, this is greater than negative 1 over 2 plus, oops, square root of 2 plus square root of 5. Because of this inequality, we have that 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 5 is greater than the absolute value of 1 over square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5. Okay? And there you have it. I just found an upper bound for this expression 
and an upper bound for this one. So now I'm going to combine those two into my equation. So let's go over here. We know that absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 5, and the absolute value of 1 over x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5 is less than 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 5. Therefore, if I combine them, I'm going to use a different color, we have that the absolute value of x plus 2 over the absolute value of square root of x squared plus 1 plus square root of 5 is less than 5 because of the absolute value of x plus 2 divided by this expression right here which is this square root of 2 plus square root of 5 and that's the number I'm going to use so I'm going to write that same number in our top equation so this is equal now this whole thing is less than absolute value of x minus 2 that hasn't changed times 5 over square root of 2 plus square root of 5 okay but what was the initial thing that we did to find this um, number we said delta equal to 1 but remember delta can be any number not just one so this is the trick and I know it's gonna be confusing so bear with me I know it's gonna be a little bit confusing but check it out epsilon now now notice that x minus 2 absolute value of x minus 2 is gonna be what by hypothesis is less than delta but we want this whole thing less than what than epsilon okay so take this multiply it to the other side and leave x minus 2 alone so absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon times the reciprocal of this number which is square root of 2 plus square root of 5 over 5 okay that whole thing call it your delta okay so delta let me use a different color so the delta that I'm gonna use is equal to the minimum value between this whole thing and what and one so epsilon times square root of 2 plus square root of 5 over 5 and 1 okay and what we just did is we found delta that for any epsilon is gonna satisfy the inequality okay because if this number this thing that we have here it gives you uh, if you take an epsilon let's say a hundred then a hundred times the square root of 2 plus square root of 5 over 5 is gonna be greater than 1 so Delta is gonna be what the minimum of those two which is 1 but if I take epsilon to be 0 0.000001 then multiply by this number then the minimum between one and that number is gonna be that number so it's it always works that's why we can do that because no matter what epsilon I choose I'm gonna set I'm gonna have a delta that's gonna satisfy my inequality and this is how you solve this problem I know it was a long problem again but hopefully you can have an idea how um, complex this type of problems can be but how to solve them as well so I hope you enjoy this video please um, share with your friends always like the video subscribe go to multival.com and have a great day